Hi everyone, it's Emily, and today I'll be talking about the video games that I regret buying. And as a little side note, I am in front of my first uh, shelf in my new apartment, where I'm going to be displaying some of my favorite franchises and collectibles. I do have a few more shelves on the way that are going to be anchored um, in this corner that are going to hold the bulk of my games, um, but just wanted to kind of share how my room is starting to shape up. But on to my buying regrets. So buying regrets are nothing new on the collecting scene, and I feel like we don't talk about them enough because often it's easier and also more fun to talk about all of our collection wins and great pickup finds um, while downplaying all of the maybe poor decisions we made when forming our collections. Now these last few years that I've been amping up my collecting, I think we haven't had too many buying regrets, but I certainly made a few mistakes along the way that I view more as learning experiences. So I'm going to share a few games that I do regret buying in some capacity and what I learned um, and doing those mistakes and how it's kind of helped me with my future collection trajectory. So the obvious buying regret is buying a game that you end up disliking. So I'm not going to be highlighting those type of buying regrets in this video. Um, these are going to be more in the perspective of a collector. So the first lesson that I've learned from my buying regrets that I'm going to share is being patient in buying the ideal region version. So I would say this is more of a lesson for collecting modern consoles, especially the Switch. But here in North America, we often see um, some niche games go out of print much quicker than the PAL or European counterpart. And early on in my collecting journey, um, there were a few instances where I was concerned that we wouldn't see more stock or stock at at least MSRP for certain niche games. And so I went and bought the PAL version. So I have a few examples of this. I would say my biggest regret though, Rise Up 1, where I did buy the PAL version after seeing the crazy prices of the North American edition a few years ago. This has since seen multiple reprints, so I've been patiently waiting to kind of switch out this copy for a North American version to match with all my other Atelier games. So I guess through this experience, I did learn that as a collector, the region variation was something that did matter to me. So moving forward, I've been trying to be more patient, waiting for reprints when certain games go out of stock. There are a few other NIS America titles that I made the same mistake with, such as Disgaea 4 here and Fallen Legion. So these two games, I'm a little less pressed to try to get the North American variant. I again have the most regret for the Rise of Game because it is one of my favorite games on the Nintendo Switch. Now, speaking of patience, my next buying regret has to do with buying a game right before it gets deeply discounted. So when I buy a game day one to play, this is less of a concern for me, but when I buy a game thinking I'm getting a good deal, but then the price drops later and I still haven't touched the game, it is something that I do regret. This happened to me last year with 13 Sentinels for the Nintendo Switch. I was waiting patiently to get this on sale, but I was worried that the pre-order bonus, which uh, is this set of cards here, was gonna go out of stock, but I've since learned that it seems like most Atlas games on this Switch are very well stocked and you don't really have too much of a concern of it going out of print anytime soon. And they often seem pretty substantial price drops. So more often than not, it does pay to wait for these titles unless you want to play it. I did end up playing this shortly after buying it and it was one of my favorite games I played last year. There just was a pretty substantial price drop. I think the week I started playing it that made me regret a little bit of pulling the trigger too soon. And on a similar note, escaping into FOMO is my next lesson learned. So I'm not gonna get into all the limited print publishers and how that does incite a lot of FOMO in collectors, but the FOMO I'm gonna be talking about has more to do with worrying a game is going to go out of print super quickly. Um, so for most of the modern console games, it's really rare for a lot of the highly anticipated games to go quickly out of print, uh, which is something that I've since learned. The most recent example of this was with Metroid Prime Remastered, where when the physical eventually launched, there was a really limited supply and uh, people were paying outrageous prices on the secondhand market. If they were to wait just a few weeks, Nintendo was going to resupply all the retailers. So one of the times I did this, and thankfully I didn't have to pay scalper prices or anything like that, was for Diamond Rampa Decadence. Now when this came out, everyone was in a bit of a frenzy, worried that this was going to go out of print really quickly, even though it is by Spike Chonsoft, who do make adequate stock of their games. But I ended up buying a copy on GameStop last minute because they were the last retailer to actually have any available on 
their website. And even though I did fully intend to buy this game eventually, I was afraid it was going to go out of stock and I wouldn't have the opportunity to do so, except maybe for like a PAL version again. But of course this game was restocked and now it's sold for much cheaper. And I haven't actually touched this version of the game yet. I played the first game on PC way back in the day, um, but I haven't cracked open the Switch version yet. So I've learned for these major retail releases to be patient. Even if the stock is rather limited around launch, um, if it's not specified as some sort of limited edition game, you'll likely see restocks come out later. And on a similar note, last year we had a lot of FOMO for the 3DS and people trying to scoop up games before the prices started skyrocketing. I tried to be really careful with the games that I selected during that time, knowing full well that uh, the prices were kind of being inflated. One of the games that I did overpay a bit for after seeing it available on some alternative websites later on, like on Video Games Plus, was Story of Seasons Trio of Towns. So I think I paid like $60 for this. Um, it was, it's still sealed, but I bought this on Amazon. And I think when I was starting to use Video Games Plus a bit more regularly, they did have this on sale for like 30 at one point. So a little bit of a buying regret there, but it wasn't, I guess, as bad as it could have been. And my last few 3DS pickups were for the Professor Layton games, which have definitely skyrocketed in price and I paid a lot of money for those. But I don't really have any regrets at the moment for those because I know they're probably not going to get reprinted on the 3DS and even if they do have some sort of Switch HD remaster, I did want them on the 3DS. So I was okay paying the prices that I did for those. So that's not to say I might not have future regrets when it comes to certain games getting ports or remasters down the line. Um, there are a few I have here that I have slight regrets of double dipping on um, and not just patiently waiting for the port or remaster for them. Um, this first one I'll talk about is Immortals Phoenix Rising. So I bought this on the Switch and I still haven't played it yet. And I also bought the PS5 version later um, when this was discounted on GameStop for I think around $10. So as a big handheld collector, I do really like having the switch option for a lot of these games, but if the performance isn't that great, part of me wishes that I should have just waited and just bought the one copy on the PlayStation release. Um, so far, I don't really have too much regret when it comes to Immortals Phoenix Rising, because what I've heard, this still plays perfectly fine on the Switch. But yeah, I haven't played this yet, so I might have regrets down the line. But there are a couple games I do regret buying on the Switch because they really don't perform that well. Um, the first pain, Persona 5 Strikers. And I did end up buying this at launch, even though I hadn't played Persona 5 Royal yet, um, just for uh, this steelbook, which I, I did kind of give into the steelbook FOMO at the time. I'm not really a big Switch steelbook collector, you know. In my last video, I did share how I did buy Octopath Traveler 2 for the Best Buy steelbook. And I don't have regrets on that because that is a gorgeous steelbook. This Persona 5 Strikers one, I would say, is less nice. And I think I would have preferred the PS4 version of the steelbook. But I think at the time when I placed my order, um, that was already out of stock. But speaking of Persona 5, I did end up buying two copies of the game. The steelbook um, of the PS4 version and the regular Switch copy. Why I needed both versions of this game, even though I haven't played a Persona game yet, I can't really tell you. Um, I did actually get both these for great deals. This was like around 25 and this was 30 um, brand new. As I'm seeing my collection continue to grow, I am having some regrets and double dipping on certain games, especially if they're not from one of my top favorite franchises. And I actually ended up doing the same thing with Nier Automata here. Uh, do I need both versions of the game? Probably not. Um, do I regret it? Not totally. I still feel like I'll really love this game. Um, I'm hoping to play it sometime this year. But yeah, I think when my collection starts to become too large, I'm gonna have to think of ways to cut it down. And a lot of these games that I double dipped on might be the first ones to go. Now circling back to games I regret buying on the Switch instead of the PS4 due to performance, there's another reason why I regret buying some games on the Switch instead of just buying the PlayStation version. And that has to do with downloaded codes. So there are now quite the number of Switch physical games that are often collections that only have maybe one game on the cart and the rest are codes in the box. Or you have to download it after inserting the cart into 
your Switch. This is the case with the Spyro Reignited Trilogy. I believe just the first game is on the cart and then you have to download the other two games after inserting it. But if I were to buy the PS4 version, all three games would have been on the disc. And the more I've been looking into physical preservation and how I want to buy my physical games, this has become more of a collecting priority for me. Um, similarly with um, Ty, the Tasmanian Tiger, this was actually a pretty cool variant to pick up because it comes with this uh, boomerang USB with some extra bonus content. But the second game that's advertised on here is a digital code only. Now, this is of course not just a problem with the Switch. The PS4 and Xbox both have games that require downloads in order to play them. But moving forward with my collection, I'm gonna be a bit more uh, conscious of this. And if there's an alternative that includes the entire game on the cart or disc, that's probably gonna be the one I will go for. Now to dive down further into the rabbit hole of Switch carts. I mentioned on this channel before how certain Nintendo games have revised carts um, later down the line that include uh, patches. But as we've been seeing with most of these modern game releases, most games come with patches and are not fully complete on the cart. So for publishers that do this, like Nintendo, that are games I don't want to play on day one, I'm going to try to be more patient so that when I do buy my copy, it's going to be the fully revised cart version, hopefully. Or like with the case of Pokemon Sword here, I'll wait for the DLC to also be integrated on the cart in some form. I'm still holding out for Pokemon Scarlet Violet uh, to have the DLC included on some sort of physical game card um, and see if that ends up happening or not before I go and buy it. Now, as I've been getting back more into PlayStation collecting, I've also been trying to be more conscious about which edition of the game I buy. And even though a lot of PS4 games are dirt cheap right now, I've been trying to hold out to buy the PS5 version. Mostly because even if the PS4 version has a PS5 upgrade, I don't really want to take up a lot of memory space to download the PS5 upgrade. So one of the PlayStation 4 games I wish I waited to buy on the PS5 is Yakuza Like a Dragon. And I was kind of swayed to buy this particular version because it is the Steelbook edition. It also came with the Best Buy PS4 um, bonus Steelbook. So I got two Steelbooks for one game, um, at a very low price, but I kind of wish I bought this again on the PS5. So that's what I've been trying to do now moving forward. Now I'm sure there are more buying regrets I have in certain situations I didn't discuss in this video, but the last one I'm going to talk about is buying games with stock photos on them from third party sellers. Now this circles back to the first lesson I started with, but I feel like this is a mistake a lot of collectors do, especially um, if they're buying games from certain websites for the first time. So this of course happens all the time with Switch and PlayStation games where they advertise a stock photo of say North America, but then the seller sends you the PAL variant. But the system I have the most regret doing this with is the 3DS um, and the World Edition. So I have Bravely Default here and I also have Kid Icarus Uprising um, that have the World Edition seal. I've talked about World Editions before on this channel, but they're basically the North American cart that you get from the standard releases. And because certain regions in Southeast Asia mostly do not have a region-specific eShop to buy games digitally from, what Nintendo did was they took the North American cart and repackaged it in a new case, which they called the UAE or World Edition. Um, this was catering mostly to Saudi Arabia, Malaysia, Singapore, and the whole UAE region. So because this contains a North American card, they of course still run and play on US devices. However, this variant is still relatively common because again, the UAE regions did not have their own digital eShop. So they had to rely solely on physical releases to play these games. So when these listings advertise a North American variant, but send you a UAE version, typically are valued less because of how common they are. It is really disappointing to receive. And for collectors who just want the North American standard cases, in their collections, it's disappointing to receive this after buying a North American stock photo listing. So to a lesser extent, um, I did something similar with this Canadian version, which includes French on the cart um, and has uh, this difference on the cover art image. And even though this isn't usually considered less valuable than just the standard North American version, as a collector, I don't really like having things obscuring the cover art. So it was a little disappointing to receive this instead of the standard North American version. So these were all of my buying regrets I wanted to highlight in this video, as well as the lessons learned when navigating the collecting scene, especially for these consoles that I 
do the majority of my collecting for. Most of these are just kind of nitpicky collector regrets that I have when it comes to building up my collections. As I mentioned in the beginning, there are of course more reasons to regret buying games, especially when it comes to um, enjoying a game or not. But let me know if you have any major buying regrets for certain games you picked up or even consoles or any lessons learned that uh, you picked up along the way of your collecting journey. And I know on this channel, I've been mostly picking up all of the kind of collecting wins with my pickup videos. And as fun as growing collections can be, it's certainly okay to have regrets along the way. So in the future, I'll bring up more topics like buying regrets or potential downsizing of certain collections and things like that. At this time, I'm pretty content with my collections and I don't see myself downsizing or doing any drastic changes anytime soon. But I think it's natural for whenever you have a collection that tends to grow, you also grow along with it. And with that, you may or may not want to change things along the way. So I'll be sure to update you guys whenever that happens with me and my collections. And until my next video, bye guys.